I don't want to die because of my weight. I don't want to die because of complications because of my weight. The very thing that has like kept me from living is going to be the very thing to actually keep me from living. What's up y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today we're going to be talking about Amberlynn. She uploaded a video that was titled, This Conversation Gets Really Serious and Dark. And then weigh in 2 7 2024. Um, and in this video, she talks a lot, of, pretty candidly, about her weight and her thoughts about her weight. And I think it's a perfect video to kind of go over her thoughts and hopefully share some helpful tips or, um, you know, reach out and say, like, you know, there are people that are genuinely interested in helping or that do want to see you succeed, which I know that people might, might not think that that's what I want, but that truly is what I want. And I, I've learned since covering this that there are actually a good amount of people that want to see her succeed. A lot of the people in my comments um, seem to be that way. And so this is the video right here. And we're just going to, we're going to skip ahead about six minutes in because the rest of it's kind of stuff that has nothing to do with what we're going to be talking about but she's doing a q a and she's answering questions and yeah that's all you need from me the last question is are you worried about all the plus size influencers dying so i chose this question because this is something i've actually been like <laughs> thinking about a lot like there was recently a video that i saw online of this person talking about all of the recent plus size influencers that have died and it is so many and it's just like, I have never been part of health at every size because I don't believe that. I'm very much like body positivity though. Like love that body physically, like what you look like regardless of your size because everyone is beautiful, but not every size is healthy. And I feel like that's very obvious. I don't know how that's not obvious to people. Preaching. <laughs> that being bigger is unhealthy. It does cause so many more health problems statistically. Like this isn't just something that people say to be just like fat phobic because trust me, I experience fat phobia, fat shaming every single day. But when it comes to like health stuff, that's not just like fat phobic, that's not fat shaming, that's just like reality and the truth. And that's something that I've always firmly believed. There was a minute there years and years ago where I was delusional when where it's like doctors would tell me, you know, yeah, everything's perfect. Like your blood results, perfect. Like you're healthy, you're just overweight. Like I would hear those things constantly. So it fed into my Delulu. But y'all, I tell, like. I, I think, yeah, that's something that you hear a lot. But I think as you start to get older, you start, you just kind of start to realize maybe your body isn't holding the weight as good as it once was or you're noticing the aches and pains that come along with that and then obviously like i've said before you see a lot of overweight people you see a lot of older people you don't see a lot of really overweight older people because it it does take a toll on your body like to say that it doesn't again in in amberlyn's words is delulu i'm telling you your 30s your brain like i think it becomes more clear because i just feel like i think more clear now and it's just I think part of that is true, but I also think that as just as you get older, your mortality and just the realization that you don't live forever starts to become more and more real. And you start, I think part of it is like you start to see the younger generation and then even younger generation. Like for me, like I'm, I'm 31, right? So I'm a millennial, like right there. And I remember when everyone was talking about Gen Z like as the young people and now it's Gen Alpha as the young people. So I'm realizing I'm like two whole generations away from being the young generation. So it's like I've realized I'm not I'm not the young guy anymore. I'm just not. And and you start to realize, OK, what, what do I want my life to look like as I get older? And I think for a lot of people that are, you know, still really overweight, at least in Amber Lynn's case, you start to really think about how do I want my life to look in the future and how you know in is the the life that i'm living now the size that i am the the habits all of the things that i'm doing is that something that i can genuinely sustain and and keep doing for a long time and it seems that she um again you know it is amberlyn so it's like who knows how legit this is but it seems that she's starting to realize like this it just ain't it ain't gonna it ain't gonna last forever right just like the way that I used to think like early 20s, mid 20s is like so different than like the way that I think now. Anyways, I'm totally rambling. But what I'm trying to say, one day I will be 
a plus size influencer who has died. That is crazy to think about. But reality is, is reality is reality. Um, now I'm stuttering. We all die. It's, it is true. I don't even know what I'm saying because the topic of death is one that I don't enjoy. Everyone dies. <laughs> Why are we talking about this? Skinny influencers die. We're all going to die. Okay. Whether you're an influencer, whether you're a cop, whether you're a surgeon, whether you're a teacher, like it's all going to, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But it's just eye opening to see like how many influencers who are plus size have died due to complications because of their weight. To answer the original question. Yes, I am worried. Um, it does worry me. It makes me sad. It makes me scared. And it's just like, if losing weight was easy, then we would all have our perfect bodies. We would all have our perfect health. Like that is true. And I, I, I honestly completely agree with that. I think that th losing weight is unbelievably difficult. Um, there is so much more to it than just exercise more, eat less food. Like when I say that, those things obviously work, but just because something is like simple, that doesn't mean that it's easy. And so I think for Amberlynn, she's she's realizing that. And I think it's tough because Amberlynn obviously has put herself in this position to every decision she makes um, is going to be looked at, you know, through a microscope. It's going to, people are going to be combing through every decision. And so that definitely makes it harder for her. But I don't, like, I genuinely don't think that Amberlynn, if you're watching this, I hope you are. I don't think that you're a lost cause. I don't think that it is impossible for you to lose weight. I think that you absolutely, if this is the most important thing to you, right? And you decide losing weight and getting healthy, this is what I need to focus on for two years or a year or whatever, right? Like, that is going to be the main thing, not vlogging, not, um, you know, putting up these videos, not doing these weigh-ins, not doing this, this new series, not focusing on your health. If you decided to do that, I genuinely believe that you could make, make it happen. And there are so many options, right? And so I don't think that all hope is lost. Like, I really don't. Like, it's just not the way that it works. For some people, yes, they can wake up one day and be like, you know what? I'm about to change my life and for other people such as myself it is very freaking hard and I know it's a lot of like up here it's a lot of like brain chemistry slash chemicals mental illness trauma like it's so many different things mixed up and you I that's all true but also it is what you are doing right now like that is just a fact of the matter it's the fact that you film everything, that you put everything up online, that you deal with that stress and that, that, you know, those issues that come along with you deciding to share your life online and share all of these ups and downs and trials and tribulations, I would be, it would be ridiculous for someone to say that this, the fact that you decide to film yourself and put it out for all these people to see does not affect that journey that you're trying to go on, right? It absolutely does. And it's not fun and it's not fair. And you guys have seen me literally try everything under the sun to lose weight. And I always do. I lose weight, but then I gain it back. But then I gain more back. But then I lose that weight again. And then I gain it back. And then I lose and then gain and then lose and then gain. It is a cycle that has been forever. Literally started when I was 11 years old. I would not be putting myself through this torture if I had an answer. Everyone is different. Everyone's body is different. The way that they do things is different. Some people, they literally just wake up and they're like, you know what, I'm gonna do this. And they do it. Okay, so I understand where she's coming from with that, but I do think that Amberlynn, that you think that someone that has been able to lose the weight, it has, it, it almost feels like it almost seems like you're saying like it's easy, which I'm, I'm not sure if that's what you're meaning, but it's it's not right. Everyone, myself included, but everyone that I know that I'm close with that I've become friends with um, that has lost weight and kept it off. They have had many, many issues and trials and tribulations and they have slipped up sometimes pretty bad and they've been able to make that change last though right and what is the thing that those people have in common that i feel like and no offense to amberlynn but like you seem to be missing is that when those people slip up myself included it is 
I am a lot better, I feel like, at being able to put that behind me in the past, right? And just be able to say, okay, you know what? I messed up. I made a mistake. Let's move on. Instead of, it seems like a lot of times, Amberlynn yourself and then other people that maybe are in the same boat as you, it's like, I messed up. I'm a failure. I might as well just do this thing, right? I might as well like uh, we'll see later in this video, have a whole week where I'm off track and I don't care and I don't even think about it because, oh, whatever, it's, it, you know, might as well. So that I think is a really big thing. Like you have to be able, you have to do a lot better job at just when you do slip up, not letting that turn into a week, a month, a, a year, right? Some people, it takes a hundred different times to try it and they're finally successful. But for me, for some reason, I have tried 10,000 times and I just can't seem to get it. And then it makes people question all the time, like, does she just enjoy being fat? Like, is just just her thing? No, I hate it. I hate everything about it. I hate food. I hate my... Okay, I come on weight i hate my body i hate my size i hate the way i walk because of it i hate the way i'm treated because of it i hate the health issues i've had because of it i hate the health issues that will happen because of it like i hate every single second but i feel stuck i feel mentally stuck i feel physically stuck i feel emotionally stuck i just feel stuck and confused and lost and it's like people think they have all the answers people think they know exactly what to do and people think that if they were in my situation they would know what to do but it's just it's not that easy i don't want to die because of my weight i don't want to die because of complications because of my weight the very thing that has like kept me from living is going to be the very thing to actually keep me from living and that is that is the truth um th like that is the truth to an unbelievable extent. Um, I think that that's a really good way to put it, right? The thing that has kept me from living, right? I used to say that all the time. Uh, when I was at my heaviest, I wasn't living, I was just existing, is also going to be the thing that keeps you from living, right? That is going to kill you. And Amberlynn, like, you, you really have to understand how, like, serious these things are. It's not a joke. It's not just like, oh, I'll, I'll get back on track next week. I'll get back on track next week. I'll get back on track next week. Like, eventually next next week's not going to come. And so you, you, you have to, like, these moments, and, like, I know there are going to be people that are like, I don't even think this is a true moment, whatever, right? I choose to believe that this is really something that she feels because I, I, I personally don't think Amberlynn is that great of an actress, <laughs> right? Um, and so you have to like, let these moments stay with you and not just tell yourself, ah, oh, you know what? Nah, it's fine. I'll get back on track next week. Because if, again, like I said, eventually that won't, that just won't come. And that is scary. It's like, the best way to put it is like, I feel like I died already. I have spent majority of my life not living because of my size not experiencing because of my size and it's like it's only been as of recently where i have felt myself become alive a little bit more and i feel myself coming out of like this mentally and physically paralyzed stage that i've been in for so long and i just every day i just want to improve more and it's like this last week was like the best week that i've had and I can't even tell you how long. Every day I felt like I was living, every day I felt like I was existing and I was happy. And I rarely thought about my weight and that's very rare for me. I literally just told you like, it just seems like I'm constantly thinking about my weight and my size. And then... So when, when she's talking about this last week, so this is from the most recent video right before this one and so this is this is her last video and it says living my best week a week with friends palm reading michael hall right and in this video she is out with friends a, a lot of the comments are are disputing whether or not there was actually other people with her but she is out she's 
drinking a lot in this video, eating a ton of different foods. Um, and it seems like a lot of people, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these clips are, it's just like, oh, another, another thing of food, another thing of food, right. Of going out to eat. Oh, look, now we have, now we have a whole cake. Right. And then it's just the way I see it is it feels like for Amberlynn, the only enjoyment is coming from these things, right? The food, the alcohol, all of these, these things that are li like, you have to, you have to see it for what it is, right? These are the things that are slowly killing you, right? And I'm not saying that those things are bad in, in any capacity, right? You can absolutely have cake every once in a while. You can absolutely drink every once in a while if you have a healthy relationship with it. And Berlin, you don't though, right? And like, you have to accept that and then try and make a change and try like it feels like pardon the pun but like you want to have your cake and eat it too and that's just not it's not gonna happen like at some point you have to understand that there are going to be certain wants that you have to refrain from for a certain amount of time and I'm not saying forever but there are certain things that right now you might have to say no to because there is so much more to life than just going out and drinking and eating. Like there is so much more. And like, it feels like you're saying the first time in my life I felt like I was living was you going out to drink and eating a bunch of food, right? There's so much more to life than that. And you have to understand that like you can have that and you deserve to have that. Like, I know people are going to be upset with me because they don't like Amber Lane, whatever, right? But you deserve to have a life that you feel like you are living, where you're not just existing in your apartment, ordering takeout consistently day after day after day. That is not a life that you are living. And like, I truly believe that you can make these decisions that can start to swing to a life that you're living and not just existing. I really believe that. I really, really do. The minute I stop and the minute I just enjoy life with friends and go to bars and like get drinks and then just all these things, like I, I come back after all of that, after the high of just feeling so happy and I step on the scale and I gain weight. <laughs> That's no surprise. After a week of all of that, and I, I, I've never done so much walking in my life, but as someone with lipedema and lymphedema, the more I walk, the more I swell, the more I gain weight. That's something that I have to figure out, something I have to work on. There's only so much I can do because again, these things are not curable. I just had every single ingredient for happiness this last week while also finding every single ingredient for weight gain. So it's like, it's just like bittersweet. It's like the week where I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna live my life and I'm just gonna have the time of my life. I'm not gonna think about my weight not one time. The minute I stop thinking about my weight is the minute where things go downhill. So I'm just like so rambling right now. I don't know what is happening, but I'm gonna put my weight in right here so we can just move on. I am going to do my Wednesday weigh in for you guys. So it is February 7th, which is actually my mom's 55th birthday. So everyone say happy birthday to Mama Lynn. Happy so birthday. you guys already know I've gained weight. I already know. Like I treated the last week as if I was on vacation for the first time in my whole life. And I don't regret a single moment of it. I literally only live once. It's a new weigh in week starting right now. So I'm just going to be happy that I even woke up alive living. I created memories last week. But anyways, I could ramble on about that forever. Let's just step on the scale. Hello, it's ready. 515.0 pounds. All right, so 515.0, yup. I had a feeling that was gonna happen. So, I so basically we're back at the start. As you can see, I did gain weight because last week I was 
and since I was 515.0 today, I gained 6.2 pounds of salt, water retention, calories. I I drank my calories a lot this week and I'm not really a girly pop that does that. I drink a lot of like diet and um, diet Gatorades or Gatorade Zero, whatever you want to call them. So I do a lot of that. So drinking my calories, not a good idea because your girl has retained a lot of water. My goal for last week originally was to cook more and I was not successful with that goal at all. So my goal for this week is to simply just like make better choices. That's super important that I do that, whether it's better choices on the food that I eat while I'm at a restaurant or the food that I make at home. Because a lot of people are just like, you know what, cook more at home. Like you're gonna do so much better, but you, you don't realize that like I can cook at home just fine, but it's like, it's still like the choices that I have to make. Like, you know how easy it would be for me to make like a whole box of hamburger helper and like eat that and be like, oh, it's totally fine because like I cooked that at home, but that's more calories than me getting like, say a meal from McDonald's, you know, it just like depends on the meal. Okay. This is like frustrating because when I talk about Amberlynn, like she has the base knowledge. Like this is something that, this is something that I would probably say, right? Not that I, I mean, I don't really eat out very much, but you know, you can overeat while eating at home. But the, the thing, Amberlynn, is that you have to understand that like you have, the, like I think where frustration comes from people is because there are a lot of people that, as far as like cooking at home, that's like, it's just not really an option for them, right? Like they're, they're working a nine to five job, they have kids, like being able to cook every meal just isn't gonna happen, right? But like, Amberlynn, you have the time and resources, money, to be able to cook healthy meals. Like you have that time, you have the resources, you can do it, right? Or you could just order from a meal prep service if you wanted to, right? Like there are so many options that are so much better than obviously, yeah, do, eating a whole thing of hamburger help is not a great idea. But yeah, you can eat that at home. The same thing, but like this is where it's frustrating because I think that is like having a goal of not eating out as much is very, I think a very, very good idea. I think almost anybody would agree that going to eating out more than once a day is so unbelievably expensive one but it is abs it's just clearly not a recipe for success like there are so many basics that it feels like are being skipped over because it's like oh well you could lose weight by eating mcdonald's every day it's like yeah you could but like that's obviously not the most ideal thing and so it's just it's just frustrating man of course but it's not always cook at home cooking at home doesn't automatically make something healthy I would like to be delusional and think that, and I'm sure there was an era in my life where I did think that way, but that's just not realistic because there's so many things that you can cook at home that are just as bad as getting takeout. And there are takeout things that- But the thing with cooking at home is that the time that it will require might just stop you from even having that, that meal, right? And so again- <sighs> You can get that is Sorry. way healthier than whatever it is you're cooking at home. So it's all about making better choices. That is like literally my goal, whether it's cooking at home or I'm ordering the takeout or whatever it may be. I just wanna make better choices, whether that be the liquids I'm drinking and the food I'm eating. I wanna, you know, pick more vegetables, have a little bit more fruit, truly really just like feed my body better things, things that'll make me feel better and hopefully it'll show up on the scale next week. Um, is there gonna be a weigh-in next Wednesday? Who knows? I know for me, the thing, the thing that a lot, ends up frustrating a lot of people is that this will be said and this will be this 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 video will be so heartfelt and like but then we'll, we'll go the next week i'm not saying this is going to happen i hope it doesn't but a lot of times the next week it's like right back to what we were doing before and then anyone that has any like hey i thought we were going to do this it's like oh they're just a hater it's just like how do you there's going to be because I'm really focusing this year on losing those 100 pounds. And um, honestly, I'm only down 0.8 of those pounds, but I know that I can still do it. And I know that's possible. I know I sound like a joke. I know a lot of people are probably laughing at me, but it's like one thing about myself is that I never give up. And that is something I love about myself. And so 
it's not that people are just laughing at you. It's that there are so many avenues that you can take that it feels like are being neglected. And I think it's, it's a little confusing. Like there are so many, genuinely so many different things that you could do, right? So many different ways of eating. There are people that you could reach out to. There's medications, there's weight loss surgery. There are all these things that could help that it feels like are being just like, oh, I don't want to do that. And it's like, why though? Like, why? If you're genuinely afraid of your life no longer being there because of your size, why would you not take every opportunity that you could, right? Because you can't afford it. You do have the money to do it, right? Why not? That's what is confusing. And I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep trying. And I know for a lot of people, you guys have been watching me try and fail, try and fail for years. Literally, it's been a decade on YouTube where I have done nothing but fail when it comes to my weight loss. And I know it's so easy to look at me as just that, like someone who has failed so hard on her weight loss. But like, I'm so much more than that. And I think that's why I'm like, do I really want to keep these weigh-ins on my channel? Like, what do I want on my channel? Like, I'm super confused because I don't want it to be super weight focused, but I still want to share my journey with you guys. So it's like, it's confusing up here in the brain. So that's pretty much the whole video. But to speak on that last point, like you have to, I think Emily, like you have to really accept the fact that the majority of people that are following you are following you because of your size, whether or not they are like, they're following you because it's inspirational that you're trying to lose weight or because you're so big that it, it's a spectacle to them, right? Regardless of why those people are following you, that is why. And so to completely stop making content about this, I do, I just, I just don't think that you would be happy with the viewership you would end up getting. Um, and so I'm just, I do just want to say that I think that that's something that's important to, to say, but I do want to say like at the end of this video, I truly want you to succeed. And I feel like it is possible. Like I know, you know, I tried to help you in the past and like that offer is always on the table. Like if you genuinely want someone to help you and you want someone to listen and like try and give you advice, I'm, I'm fine with doing that. I don't have a problem with that. But at the end of the day, regardless of what program you're on, what person you're working with, what, um, you know, medication you're on or weight loss surgery you take, like none of that is going to work unless you buckle down and really decide to actually give it a real try. Like over the years, Yes, you've lost weight and you've gained it back. But it's clear that after every subsequent, I guess you could call it failure or just relapse, whatever, the the tr the the tries are getting shorter and shorter, right? Like you try for a couple days, you have one slip up, and then it's like you're just over it. That you you just cannot. That cannot be your mindset. It can't. You have to be okay with slipping. It's fine. It, literally everyone does. But you have to. Get back on the wagon, right? I, I've, I've used the wagon analogy before. You are the one driving the wagon. So if you fall off of it, that thing, it doesn't just run away from you, right? Just get back on and start moving forward. Like you, I believe that it is possible. I really do. But that's all I have to say. I just wanted to share my thoughts. I thought this was a, a pretty candid video. Um, we'll see what the future holds. I would love to know what y'all think down in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.